episode two, people, the blueprint. First and foremost, I think that we should define what a blueprint is because I think that helps to understanding the language of what you use for construction, right? Now, I was telling a story about how when I was a kid, my father, I'm the son of an architect. So we would roll into his office and you would smell ammonia. Ammonia was the chemical used in order to create a document that was blue. That was a drawing. Blueprint. There you go, right? Now, the question is, as an owner, right? Because what we've stated about this show is we want to talk a little bit about owners and we want to talk about contractors to bridge that gap to make it a little bit less argumentative and to have a better process in construction. And what we stated was the owner has a responsibility to learn about construction because they are a player in the game. They aren't a party that just sits there and says, poof, it's there. Because as we showed before in that paradigm, that it was super important that the owner is involved in the process. But as an owner, you have to understand a brand new language. That language is drawings, which is a two-dimensional image to create a three-dimensional space that you're actually going to live in or develop or build. If you don't understand that language, what are you going to do? So let's talk briefly about what that language is and then the three different types of drawings that you are responsible to understand. So if the language is the blueprint, we're going to talk about what are the types of drawings that you need to understand. And there are three types of drawings. The first, we call it the plan. What you might understand it as what we call the floor plan. But there's many other different types of plans, right? It could be the plan of the land that you're on. It could be the plan of the floor that you're on. It's just a view. This is a view of a drawing called a plan view. The first view, which I always thought was the easiest to understand, right? Because someone's going to hand you a drawing and now you're supposed to be able to interpret that. So the first one is the plan. What is a plan? Imagine you're a bird flying over something, looking perpendicular to it. That is that view. So if you're looking at a apartment, you always see, oh, let me see the plans. They're showing you as if you were, they sliced the roof off the building and you were looking down into that apartment. You see where the kitchen is, the bathroom, it's a two bed, it's a two bed. That is the plan view. The next view that you always see or people talk about is the elevation view. What is an elevation? An elevation is, imagine if you were actually a human standing, looking at the actual space that you were seeing, right? So if you were here, we'll call that EB, that'd be me, looking at an actual building, what is it that you see? You see the floors of the building, you see the facade, you see the doors, you see the windows, you see the bricks. That is an elevation. I'm standing outside the structure, the, the, the kitchen, the bathroom is staring in front of me. That is an elevation. It's what we see in front of us. That's an elevation view. The third one, which is probably the most difficult because there's a lot more, you have to go in a little bit closer, a little bit harder to see, is called a section view. Okay. What's a section view? I always like to do it as if it was like from that movie blade where he hits him with that sword, right? And he slices him right in half. So what you can't see to the eye, right? Because when you look at elevations, you're seeing finishes. When you look at plans, you're seeing finishes, but it's almost as if the roof is off of it. But a section is what's behind what you're viewing. So that can get a little more complex. So this is probably the hardest one to understand, but it's these three types of views. I don't care if it's a 500 page document or a single drawing or a sketch. If you can understand the view that you're looking at, it's going to help you understand what that drawing is actually trying to state to you. View, 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 plan, elevation, section. You understand that you are on your way to understanding cost and understanding what is re responsible to be built in the field. These are the building blocks that we are responsible for as owners and contractors to understand. That is lesson numero uno. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That is my perspective. If you remember from episode one, we said we're going to come at you from the owner perspective and we're going to come at you from the contractor's perspective. Okay. Everyone sees contractor, general contractor, subcontractor, right? Inherently, the prefix is contract, right? So that means that the business isn't just the guy or person who takes the hammer and builds in the field. There is two sides to the construction business, and they are just as important for you to get the project that you want. So the first one, we always say admin side. The second we say is the field side. For those of you out there who are just learning about construction, think about it this way. This is the money side. 
This is the time side. And as we learned, money and time equals great project, right? So you got to understand how you're spending your money, where your money is going on the admin side. And then you have to understand the field where everyone gets confused. Well, is it one month? Is it two months? Well, that's the time side. Now, who are the players in each of these games, right? So that when you're speaking to someone and you have to understand whether they have the staff or who's actually doing it, now you can understand and translate a bit as to what is relevant. So the admin side, we call them project managers right? Assistant project managers, engineers, right? So when someone says, yo, I got this project manager on it, he's talking about the admin contract side. Now you say, well, who's in the field? Who are the guys actually building it? Those are your supers, these are the superintendent side. They're the ones who are responsible for executing those projects in the field, okay? So when you look at your project and you're like, well, how much does something cost that's this side of the equation? The other side, who actually coordinates in the field so that whatever these drawings that we just went over stated actually gets executed and it is what the drawing states. That's the super time side. Money and time equals a great project. So now you pay this architect to give you a drawing, right? How do you understand its cost? That's the money side, right? So that drawing is telling you about cost. That drawing is the basic blueprint as to how we understand how the cost of that project are going to be, okay? So you get a drawing that is the language of construction and you're getting a number to produce this drawing in real life, right? That's the money side. But that drawing serves another purpose. That drawing is the way in which and the steps in the field to execute the actual project. So that same drawing that's an economic document for you is also the plan that you have to follow in order to execute the project. So understanding the blueprint does two things. It understands what costs, what's actually getting done, what is expected of that contractor. And then again, you can take that plan and then go into the field, go to see your kitchen to see if what's being provided matches it.